She's like sort of going to start her life over, and it's everyone in the town. Am I really boring? <laughs> Pull you this can't out of use our asses. This. Use this what? Is... The whole thing? All the footage? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you should come over. Maybe we should get together in the morning and redo it. Really? Do you Maybe. actually think so? No. Oh. Maybe I do. Um, you want to just do it in the morning? Yeah. J, J, J is for Julie. You are the voice that we need. We L loved you in the movies. I want to hear you speak every week. She's the hottest little diva with a hand a weave. Just say Julie. That's she. Wah, wah, wah. We were too tired last night to continue shooting. Oh my god, we started last night and we both couldn't talk. Yeah. It was really sad and she actually yawned during it. I'm like, is it that bad? And she said, yes. <laughs> so we decided to call it a night and uh, start again today. I feel a lot better. Yeah, me too. I don't know what happened to I don't us. know what happened. I couldn't remember the name for anything. Like, I really couldn't remember the name. I think it's because we always have more energy during the day. And then we also filmed all my auditions. Oh, yeah. Which took a million years. Her auditions were tedious. <laughs> they were not... Let's just say there weren't, like, high-caliber auditions. But. but you were good. You did a good job. I mean, you know, when you get... You have to film your own auditions now. It's called self-tape. And you don't go into a casting office anymore, which is what how the way it always was. So you have to be at home being your own, you know, photographer, DP, lighting, you know, gaffer, makeup person. It's great in the sense that you can redo it. But the horrible part is you have to look back at it and see what you've done. And if you're a perfectionist at all, which I am, it can take me forever. And then she's pretty good about not being a perfectionist, but then you looked at it and you got worried too. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's tough to go from like not really auditioning at all for the last two years to like suddenly it picking up and I have like three to do and they're kind of, not the best writing and so you really wait wait let's do it let's do the second scene oh let's okay do that one. this is the second scene from a horror movie okay did you hear that what the voice what <gasps> pretty good you're gonna get that thank part. you so much <laughs> for the part the role of brenda brendan and i was who in that one sandra i don't know they came up with some really clever really names. cool names but um that's what you have to do now. And, it, you know, it sounds like, oh, that can't be that hard. But the really awful part is when you used to go into the casting office and you'd read, you'd get at least a vibe of how you did. Like you go, oh, that was pretty good because of their reaction or what they'd say. Or they'd give you direction. Yeah. Yeah. And now nothing. Nothing. It's like you're sending your tape into outer space. True. Hoping for aliens to go, hey, we want her. Yeah. But, um, and if you don't get... I mean, you could be the one who almost got it or the one that they just thought was insane and you would not know the difference. They used to. So I like started auditioning right when EcoCast, which is like what oh, you send really? yourself tapes through. Uh -huh. So I started right when that basically came out. Uh -huh. And in the beginning, they would give you notes. Oh, really? In the beginning of sending the tapes, directors and our yeah. casting people would send a note back that says, oh, that was this. Or usually if you like got to the end, they'd say, just so you know, you were like considered. Now, nothing. Nothing. But you used to at least get that. Oh, that's amazing. Up today. I've no. kicked Benny out of the shot. Um, first of all, please subscribe. Please subscribe. I remembered early on. Because we want to eventually get a vodka sponsorship. And so we really need you to subscribe and get your mom to subscribe and everybody you know. All right, we asked people to put questions in the YouTube um, comments. So one woman asked me to talk about Lily Tomlin and my relationship to her. Well, Lily Tomlin is to me a comedy goddess and I have worshiped her since I was a child, completely. So um, I grew up watching Laugh-In, those characters were so iconic and the fact that she was doing characters was so different because most comedians did jokes, right? And I've never been that big of a fan of jokes anyway. So I loved her so much. And then when I was in acting school in San Francisco, um, I was 
doing a show in a cabaret with Charlie Coffee. We were a comedy team called Brown and Coffee. And I mean, I can't believe some of the stuff I did then because I was like 21 years old. But anyway, Lily Tomlin was doing a concert kind of down the street from our cabaret. So I thought, I have to get her to come to our show. So somehow, I don't know how I did it. I called her manager and asked if she would get Lily to come to the show. And she said, we'll try. And then she showed up. She showed up. I just about died. And I performed my heart out for her. She was amazingly sweet afterwards and said, if you ever come to LA, please write to me. So when I came back here, I mean, I grew up in LA, but I was in school in San Francisco. When I came back here, I wrote her a note and thanked her so much and reminded her that she said to write to her. And then she cast me in Incredible Shrinking Woman and I got my SAG card. So that was unbelievable. That's like, like that, it was just so weird. I mean, how often does that happen? But she cast me in that, so I got my SAG card and you know, I was so grateful. And then I ran into her again when I did Murphy Brown because she was one of the people who worked at the at the studio in the, in the show. And I was one of the insane secretaries. So sweet. And I've run into her at, you know, clubs and different places, parties. And she and her um, wife, I think it's her wife, um, Jane Wagner built, they put this giant wing on the Gay and Lesbian Center in downtown Hollywood and it's so beautiful to help the gay community so I think she is the most perfect person I know I mean I love her so much and that's never gonna go away if you could say anything to Lily Tomlin right now what would you say I would say can you come over for lunch I mean I would love to just have lunch with her that would be I, I don't know I'd probably be a little bit tongue-tied I don't know if I'm that tongue-tied around famous people but she's one of them I would be and Obama yeah Obama and Bruce Springsteen and Meryl Streep I, I guess that's it now last time we shot we kind of made a mistake and I was sitting so far forward and she was sitting so far back that it looked like I had a giant head this is true so we're gonna try to stay even this yeah. time don't lean back don't, don't do that. I actually watched a video about this recently. It is true. Our brains actually don't perceive that when we see something, that something is closer or something is further away. All we perceive is that something is bigger or something is smaller. Oh, that's interesting. Like our brains literally don't perceive, oh, that thing is closer to me. Right. We just that's perceive, weird. oh, that thing is bigger. But we've interpreted, we learn to interpret it that way. Exactly, because of the light. That means a lot of people thought you had like a really tiny head. So I just want you to know. And they thought it's, I had a giant head. It's politer to say petite. You had a little petite, so. picayune head. Everyone it, soak up this long, witchy, uncut hair. I haven't had it cut since... The beginning since before the pandemic, and I'm getting it cut and colored on Saturday. So, oh my God, that's Who knows awesome! What I look like it's gonna next be next week. Gorgeous. Um, Opie Did just you farted. Fart? No, oh, okay. I was just about to do an alert. Opie's right here. He's tired, which is amazing. Um, I love him the most when he's tired. <laughs> it's so terrible, but he's a puppy, so it's understandable. But he just farted, so we're just gonna have to continue. Like we don't smell that. I mean, because when I first started, it was all just walk into the office. You know, when I first started, they didn't even tape you. Wow. They did not even tape you. They'd go, are you going to come in for the producers today? And then there'd be an assembly of people. I remember I once read for this, I was a finalist in this Delta Burke pilot, and I had to go over to C CBS, I think. Oh, no, Warner Ranch. And um, I, I walked in the room. I was the one, the one woman went in front of me, and I walked in the room, and there was like 40 people in there. 40 people and I'm going I mean if you're not prepared for that it's so shocking yeah that's like you're doing a show uh, it's completely like doing a show and Delta Burke went in first explain what Delta Burke is what Delta Burke is <laughs> well she's an actress and oh. she used to be in designing women and when I did my show the edge she's kind of heavy I played her in a fat suit even though I didn't want to do that but the producer made me wear the fat suit and I was destroying a city because I was so big Oh my it, god, it was, that's it was, horrible. She probably weighed like 150 too. I know, you know I know. I mean? It was like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't want to do it. And he's like, you have to do it. And it was really funny. Mm. But anyway, she is a very funny comedian. And she went in the room ahead just to talk to the producers. 
And she completely blew out the room. She was super funny. And they're all laughing because she's the star. And she was funny. So you, I had to follow her in. And I'm like, tough. Yeah, so I didn't get it. Mm. Faith Prince got it. You probably don't know who that is. What is Faith Prince? Faith Prince is a wonderful Broadway actress who works all the time. And, you know, I didn't feel that bad because she's wonderful. So it was like one of those things you go, okay, that was great. Like you get yourself so nervous. Hmm. And you go through, like you're performing for 40 people and then no. So that was really awful. But that's how it used to be. It was all people in the room. Hmm. So in a way, some ways that was easier because you're trying to make those people laugh or like you. And now you're just, it's nobody, Hmm. you know. And the other thing is they get all these tapes, like self-tapes. You don't even know if it's just the assistant watching going, "Mm, no, you know, you don't know. They get so many that it could easily be the dumbass assistant who doesn't like what you're doing or like your face or whatever. So it's become, I would say, harder. Right? Yeah. In general, I would say harder. Um, I don't recommend going into acting to anyone (laughs) unless you can't not do it. If you have to do it, then you can survive. Or you get fired from every other job you try to do. Yeah. Like like Benny here um, from Mirror Factory. Um, Why don't you tell them what you've been doing lately after you got fired from the Mirror Factory? I was going to say the same to you, but I accept. I have been, please don't laugh, because this is not a joke, this is my life. I've been reading. You can't hear them laughing. I know I can't hear them laughing, but I just want them to be accountable for their behavior. Okay, all right, I'm sure they will be. I've been reading tarot cards at Griffith Park four days a week. I applaud you for that. Thank you. I do. She, She put up a table with a sign, say tarot, and... You made as much money as at the Mirror Factory. This is true. So I think that's fantastic because you're your own boss. Um, as long as no one attacks you in the park, it's pretty good, right? <laughs> My cousin, she said that. She goes, aren't there a lot of weirdos there? I'm like, I think you better get a gun. Keep it under the A table. gun? Or taser. Or, or um, you know, mace. Yeah, I honestly feel pretty safe doing it. Like, I know. I'm in such a public I know. part of the, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. like up in the hills. No, like, I, I came by and saw her and she it, she's safe, you know. And it seemed like a cool thing to do. I really did think it was great as opposed to just going, oh, I have no job. I admired you for coming up with something you, she's really good at it too. Let's just say she's really good yeah, at it. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing her. it for like 10 years. Yeah, like, she's fantastic. Practicing. I consult her all the time. Um, but she's really good at it, so why not do that instead of just being sad about not being employed? So yeah. yeah, and if anybody wants an in-person reading or an over-the-phone reading at the Tarot Reading Girl, I made a different Instagram because I felt like it would be so weird to put yeah. it on my regular Instagram. Say it, it one be... more time. At the Tarot Reading Girl, one word, but I'll link it. So okay, fantastic. And um, I've been struggling with my dog all week. He's so hard. He's a puppy, and it's like having a new baby who, you know, except on a new baby, you would put a diaper on them. And, you know, this puppy pees and poops on kind of everything. He's starting to get the hang of going outside or requesting to go outside, but it's not every time at all. So that's, I feel like that's all I've been doing. Oh, I've been writing too. And then, but tomorrow, today, today, I'm doing it today, I forgot. I'm going off to do a Hallmark movie. I'm Wait, going, yay. Yeah. <laughs> yay! Wait, should we do glam moment? Yeah. Glam moment. Um, I'm going off to uh, to Seal Beach and staying in, I don't know, a Motel 6. <gasps> Ooh. So I don't, I, something like that. Um, because these things are very low budget, usually. And I'm excited about it because my friend Sam Irvin is going to direct it. I love him so much. And he's directed a lot of these. So many Christmas movies. I've been in two of his Christmas movies. And there's a, he's told me so many funny things about it. He said that the um, producers always request that he puts a Christmas tree in every shot in a Christmas movie. And I'm like, no, that can't be right. And he goes, no, it is right. So I started watching. You're gonna, now you're going to watch Christmas movies and look for this. I started watching Christmas movies. In every shot, 
there's part of a Christmas tree, which means there's four Christmas trees in the room. If they're like, if you're shooting in different directions, and it's true though. I mean, how insane is that? Is but, that so that if you're like flipping through channels yes. or something, you go, oh, it's a Christmas exactly. movie. Exactly. Like so you're you go, subconsciously. Christmas movie. So um, I look for it now and it cracks me up. But maybe that's why Christmas movies all, the, all have that wonderful feeling. I mean, I love watching Christmas movies. So I'm in My Santa and Christmas with the Andersons, um, which isn't very good. My Santa's really good. That's the one Sam directed. But um, Christmas with the Andersons is just, oh my God. It was so brutal because the hair and makeup people were out to lunch, like so bad that I would look at myself after they do it. I go, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I'd kind of try to fix it, but you didn't have time and you didn't have the stuff to fix it. And they'd go, you're fine. And then they just send you out there. And it was kind of like that with the costumes too. So it was so low budget. And I kept saying to them, um, usually when you work on things, they'll go, what are your food preferences? Which is very nice. And I don't eat gluten. So I go, well, I don't eat gluten, you know, and I like if there's fruits and vegetables too, besides everything else. This place, they never asked. The guy would just have like a setup for lunch of just some kind of pork product. Yeah, and that would be it. Like, it'd be like ham and corn. And I'm like, I don't eat pork. Uh, so I would say, is it okay? Can some can I get someone to go get a salad for me? And they'd be like, such a diva. They'd be like, oh, such a diva. So, I mean, a salad, a salad. That's not that bad, is it? That's not that, it's not like saying sushi or something really specific. I'm a salad. So they do it very reluctantly. Um, this show... I'm excited about because they actually did ask food preference, but I'm, I've been dieting with Sunfair food, so I get food delivered. So I have this adorable little green bag with all, with you know ice packs in it and all my food, and I can take that. So I'm not scared of the terrifying food, and I, mean, I don't want to sound like oh I you know I'm super picky, but I don't want to eat like just really over prepared food with tons of stuff in it that's you know made of pork and sugar. I mean. I don't know. I don't. I don't work that well on that kind of food. So just like fruits and vegetables and maybe some chicken, right? So I'm excited about this one. Plus, Sam is Sam is brilliant. He's like he's gonna shoot this whole thing in 12 days, which is. Fit. I mean, he's always does it really fast. He's so good, and um, I'm excited about it. Jody Sweeten, that's her name, right? Mm-hmm. She's the star of it. She's from Full House, and I met her the other day via Zoom very nice so she's gonna be cool that's the other thing on these these TV movies not everyone's all that nice I'm very very nice to everyone because it's so hard I mean show business is the hardest damn thing in the world so you can't just be mean to the, like the 20 year old costumer no right? but you just demand salads from craft I services. do okay I demand salad I said a PA can get me a salad okay I don't know I'm gonna stick by that <laughs> I don't think it's it's not that strange you know um so i'm i jody's gonna be really great i know already that she's gonna be a doll and i think it'll be a really smooth shoot i don't yeah. know i the other actor i know is okay here i'm blanking again um maxwell caulfield will you cut that part out where i was blanking yeah. the other actor i know is maxwell caulfield he plays the owner of the craft consortium. The show's called Craft Me a Romance. It's about a big craft company comes into a small town where there's already a small craft store, right? Um, Maxwell Caulfield was in Strip Mall. He played the husband of the craft lady. Isn't that funny? And he was Weird. also in Grease too. Oh, cool. Yeah, he, he's, he's wonderful. He's a really wonderful guy. And... He's in it, so I'm excited. I feel like it's all positive stuff going in. Oh, here comes Oak. This is a new segment called Parts We Didn't Get. <laughs> Julie, do you wanna do you wanna I, switch? How do we wanna do this? I don't know. I, I'd say I started the last one, so you go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So I booked a Super Bowl commercial like three years ago. Oh right. And I was gonna be like the main person in it, and you like all my friends and family would be like, it's finally happened. And they cut my part. Uh, like a week or two before shooting, which was devastating. Um, I have auditioned to be like the lead in a Netflix show. 
Oh, which, which I didn't which get. Which one? Uh, like the shop, it's called like the Shoplifting Sisters or something like that. Shoplifters. Okay. It, it didn't end up being called that, huge. right? Huge. No, it did. Okay. Um, you could find it on Netflix now. Well, I'm not gonna, but go but ahead. But you could. Okay. <laughs> so I auditioned to be the lead of that, which I didn't get. Um, I've auditioned for various HBO shows. Okay. Um, oh, what, the only audition that I said no to, the only audition I've uh-huh. ever declined, was for a Ted Bundy <gasps> biopic. I remember that, and I told you not to do it, because it was gross. Exactly. And I, I was going to be, like, the first girl who died in the movie. Oh. And I was like, okay. And then they were like, yeah, and you have to be topless. And I was like... Okay, and then they were like, and your nipple is going to get bitten off by Ted Bundy. And I'm like, oh my God, like, how far were they going to take this? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you're going to bleed from the eyes. Like, oh, I mean, yes, and then he gouges out my eyes. No, that's true? Yes. Oh my God, that's like a nightmare part. You'd have nightmares about that. You would. Yeah, and like, I would, it's just, I just feel like I could go topless for HBO, for the right role, not we for all like could, a yeah. non-speaking role. No, you know what I mean? No, no, no. That's so terrible. What other parts have I not gotten? Do you know of any? It's funny because your brain wants to forget those things. Yeah. Um, I they had they want there's something they wanted me to audition for years ago. They were doing it was the first like a Lucy I Love Lucy biopic. CBS was doing it, and I was like, I don't want to audition for it because I you know. I feel so much reverence for Lucille Ball. And I felt like if I don't do this accurately, it's going to be embarrassing and I'm going to feel really ashamed about it, you know? And I think it's hard to turn yourself into Lucille Ball as evidenced by becoming the Ricardos. It's not that easy to become Lucille Ball. I am shocked. Yeah. Well, I just like thought, you know, you don't want to, I mean, I just didn't want to, People to go, she's a terrible Lucy. But everyone will have their own opinion. I know. Frances Fisher, who's, um, she's very good. She did it. And she was good. And she has red hair. And she's, I don't know. She was great. I, I just, think you would have been great. I probably would have been. But, I, you know, I mean, I didn't know you then. I needed someone to talk me into it. At the time, yeah. I was like, that is, those are such big shoes to fill. I don't feel like I don't want to be embarrass myself. I mean, I don't normally do that. But I just, that was, wow. You know, and then Nicole Kidman, um, I don't know. I haven't seen it, so I can't, I can't make I've a judgment. I have seen it. Um, she clearly wasn't intimidated by it. Maybe she should have been. <laughs> Tough. I know. Tough. I know. And when I saw her, I'm like, maybe I should have tried it out for that. But it doesn't matter. It's in the past. Um, the part that kills me that I didn't get, kills me, is Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Tough. I know Paul Rubens, and I was reading for it, and it got down to me and the girl, the last girl. And Tim Burton was the director, and I, we both went and read, and I knew I did really well, and I didn't get it. And I was so crushed, because I'm like, I was really funny, and like, I don't understand what happened, and I don't think she's that funny. I mean, she's an okay actress, She's really good as the voice of Tommy on the Rugrats. But, um, I, and then when I saw the movie, and I realized they wanted someone to be straighter. I mean, that was like, that's what they wanted. And that is not something I understood at that point, that sometimes you won't get the job because you are funny. Like, you're, you're taking too much focus. And I don't, I didn't know that that was like you could n- not try to do that. I thought that's the bar you're aiming for, to be as funny as you fucking can, but you're not always because they want, I mean, Pee Wee is the star of that. So they, they didn't want that necessarily. So I have since, I've never quite gotten over it. I got to say so, hmm. cause that's such a good movie and he's so amazing. And, um, I'm still sad about it. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. He sends me a Christmas card every year. Isn't that Cute. sweet? And I save them. Oh, I know. I have them for like 15, 20 years, which is like, He's a very nice person. So what other parts didn't I get that killed me? Oh, I didn't get the part of Betty Rubble in the Flintstones movie. Hmm. I, that was really rough. And I, I felt really bad about that. And um, I 
the person who got it was Rosie O'Donnell. And I was, I was so confused about that because I was funny. But Rosie O'Donnell did get Betty Rubble's laugh. She like perfected that. And I didn't, mm. I sort of didn't think I had to do the laugh. Like I didn't go in thinking I got to perfect the laugh. I was just sort of trying to get the essence of Betty Rubble, but I guess not. So mm. that was sad too. Cause I thought, I mean, I would have worked with John Goodman who I think is brilliant and, um, one of my heroes. And, um, that, that's my, that's my dishwasher. Oh, okay. It's Sorry. Your dishwasher. That's my dishwasher. I thought that the floor was maybe going to fall through via the plumbing. Oh, like that's like a portal to hell? Yeah. Yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. I thought it was a dishwasher. Did um, you use deter- dishwasher detergent or yes, laundry detergent? Yes, I always use it. Now I buy extra because I don't want to be embarrassed and run out. Um, it's so funny how you forget things you didn't get. Like you want, your brain just wants to delete it so quickly. Totally. Right? So I know there's many parts I didn't get, but it's hard to remember them. Mm. So... I would say, though, there's little things about my career that I regret. Hmm. But in general, I'm happy with it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm particularly happy that I got to write a lot of things that got made and then I got to be in them. I feel like that was that was amazing. I yeah. feel so privileged that that happened. And I'm not even sure how that happened. But it did. So I don't know if I would feel as great about my career if that hadn't happened oh I know one thing that didn't happen and it's not like a part it's that Charlie Coffee and I wrote this film for HBO called Trigger Happy Mm. and it was an original musical about gun control and it was we wrote all the lyrics and it was I think one of the best things we ever wrote like like and it it got to the top where the executives are like maybe we should make this you know and that you that's what you always have to wait through in any studio situation It was so good, and I had the part of the mayor's wife, Peaches, and um, then at the last minute, they they didn't make it. So that was pretty crushing. I'm still hoping someday I can make it into a musical, stage musical or something, because, you know, it didn't happen. And that's like another thing that happens when you write something. Not everything gets made. So uh, that was so disappointing. Can you go for it again? Because I feel like it's so... You know, such a hot timely. Topic. I know it wasn't as timely. I mean, maybe I could, maybe I could re- resurface, especially since this is the era of people redoing everything, right? People bring things back. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a Camp Rock three. No, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. Are you going to be involved? Um, no, okay. I'm just going to get paid. So you know, well. there's that. Um, no, you know what's really funny is like. Camp Rock one, great, thank you, and then like bye bye. They 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 get rid of everybody from each one, and yeah. then they move on to the next one. Well, tell them that I can be the new Demi Lovato. <laughs> I will. I'm starting to age out of it. I, I'm yeah. just there. You yeah. only got a few more months, maybe yeah. a year. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell them yeah. about you. Tell Benny, them, Benny Lawrence, Demi Lovato. It's so close. I agree. I know. So I'm excited about that though because. You just get money from, you know, merchandising. So That's awesome. It's the best because it's so, I'm so passive. I just sit home. Who owns Camp Rock? Like who's making the it? The Disney Channel. Disney. Oh, well, that's, a, those are great people to have selling your I, stuff. I know. They're, you know, they're the best people at that thing. They are the best. So I'm now, you know, it's so funny. It's like I've said this before. Like in retrospect, if there's time that happens, you start going, okay, that's fine. Yeah. But at the moment, you get, you know, possessive and you want to control. I want to control everything, right? Mm. So at I first, don't. you don't? Oh, I want to control everything. Um, but I'm okay with it. And they did such an amazing job of all the other Camp Rocks that, like, go make Camp Rock 3, make Camp Rock 4. Do it all. I you, hope that happens. Disney was my first, my first like, real job. What was it? Uh, it was a pilot that never ended up getting picked up what was it called i don't remember it was about twins it was about these two it, you know the girl who's i'll cut out i was trying to figure out this girl's name but she's the girl who was in what's lily tomlin and jane fonda's show oh uh frankie and yeah frankie and whatever the woman who played their the daughter okay she and another woman were the stars Oh, okay. Anyways, yeah. I gl- I'm so glad we remember everyone's name all the time. I know. 
it's only because we didn't know we were going to talk about it, so our brain could have slipped. Like, if I had prepared, yeah. I, would, I would be ready with that Maybe name. Maybe you need to get prepared. Well, I don't know. I mean, we're kind of winging this whole thing, you know? Maybe that's what we should rename the show. Winging it with Julie Brown. We probably should. And this is partly, like, it's not like we don't love doing this. We do. It's just that we're very busy. And so...